Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is going to be my top 10 favorite in the eyeshadow palettes. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This is going to be an overview of my 10 favorite indie palettes that I currently have in my collection, where I think most of them, if not all of them, are still available. Because if you saw my video that I posted yesterday, I have a bunch of indie eyeshadow palettes that are no longer made. So I wanted to make sure I featured this top 10 around palettes that you can still buy. So that's the aim here, so let me just get stuck in. Before we get into the video, it may be good to know what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I have fair skin with a cool neutral undertone, and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying out eyeshadow palettes as a Sencatrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. So I finished doing my makeup today and I was like, you know what, I can wear a headband because it goes with the dress I'm wearing, it goes with the eyeshadow I'm wearing. And I love this kind of look, like a really nice, like smoky blue look with a pinky toned lip. I'm here for it. And if I'm, especially if I'm wearing something blue on top, a pink lip with a blue top is like my go-to. It goes really well with my hair, I find. Um, but yeah, the hairband went, the, went with the outfit perfectly. So I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll keep it in. I usually just use it to keep my hair out of my face as I'm doing make, makeup, but this way it works as well. So this top 10 is going to be in no particular order. I'm not really ranking these. I'm just sharing you my 10 favorites that are still out there as far as I know. So I wanted to focus on products you can still buy and I will make sure to have as many links as I can in the description box down below. So if you were interested in any of these, then you might wanna give them a purchase. Um, do be mindful that some of those links may be affiliated and if you buy through them, I could make a small commission, which is money I put towards the channel anyways, um, but then you're aware of that. And if you saw my video yesterday where I picked one eyeshadow palette from every single indie brand I have my collection, you'll find there is some overlap with some of the palettes I showed you in there. But I have also selected some other things because A, I forgot to feature some brands in that video. I just have so many palettes that I sometimes lose track. I do apologize. But I hope to be able to redeem myself today by showing you these here because some of those palettes, even though I don't have a lot by the brand or I've not tried much from the brand, they are like standouts in my makeup collection. And that's how the selection process went for this video today. It's not like picking the best palette from every single brand. It's definitely like if I go into my makeup collection, what are like the 10 eyeshadow palettes by indie brands that I could not live without, that I would miss in my collection if I ever lost them. Or for instance, if you are getting into eyeshadow palettes from indie brands, then these might be things you are yeah, you might be interested in. Um, so uh, that's sort of where I'm coming from here today. And the first palette I need to feature is one that I completely forgot to feature because I forgot to mention Kaleidos in yesterday's video, but I love these little Kaleidos quads. There are six of them, um, but you can still get some of the Futurism palettes from Kaleidos as well. I think their Escape Pod is still available too. If not, I've heard it's coming back, like they're restocking certain things or something. That's what I've been told. Um, but yeah, these little quads from Kaleidos, I have mentioned them as favorites in so many videos because the Kaleidos quads are, like Kaleidos is a brand that's, uh, it's, their website is American, but the products are all made and shipped from China. And they sort of have one foot in Asian beauty trends but they sell them on the Western market. That's kind of how I feel about Kaleidos as a brand. So they have their like, their lip clays. Um, those are really stunning as well. I did a video with all of the shades I have a while ago when I first got them in. Some amazing, very comfortable liquid lipsticks. Um, but they very much have that sort of lip stain kind of effect that you see a lot with Asian beauty. And I feel the same way about their palettes. It's not the kind of boom kapow kind of pigmentation that we see a lot from indie brands. Instead, they focus on washes of color with really nice sparkly shades that remind me a lot of the pressed glitters that we get in K-Beauty palettes, for instance. So I just pulled one out of my collection that currently I really like the look of. 
Um, this is the uh, Flowing Haze. Um, this is the color story there. They do a couple that are a little bit more intense that have more colors to them. So if you love your colorful shades, these little quads can help you with that. But I personally like this one and I think it's Venus Trap from the later collection we got, which is also their more, this more like neutrally purpley vibe. And I feel that that palette and this one go together so well, but I wanted to limit myself to just one. Just one. I wanted to be strict with myself. So yeah, that's why I'm sticking to Flowing Haze, mainly because it doesn't go super deep. It's got these really pretty sort of like mauve brown tones, and then it has this amazing shimmer. It is a little bit dark compared to the other shades we get in here, but it really adds that oomph that you want from an indie brand. In case you've never tried indie brands, they tend to be intense sometimes. So I feel that Kaleidos is very nicely like bridging that gap between like if you're someone who loves your neutrals and you just want something really easy to work with, I think Kaleidos gives you that, but they definitely do some fun things as well. So that's why I had to feature them here. If you saw my video yesterday, you know I love, love, love this brand and this is my favorite palette by them. So I have to feature it here again. This is Fantasy Cosmetica's Rogue palette. And Fantasy Cosmetica is easily, by a landslide, the favorite indie eyeshadow palette brand that, that's currently out there, in my opinion. I, feel, I love their little curated color stories. It's only nine pans, so it's not massive. They do a load of different color stories for sure. And I just love this one. It's blue, greens, and purples. We get five mattes, four shimmers, and four of these shimmers are really, really sparkly and, and special as well. So with Fantasy Cosmetica, and there is another brand in here as well, I feel they do indie really well. It's not overly complicated. You don't get a million shades. Their palettes are pretty okay, as in terms of price point. These aren't like a hundred dollars and making it really difficult for you. Plus, what I also like about this brand is that they are available through Monolith, which makes it so much easier for me as an EU customer to buy them. Kaleidos, by the way, you can only buy through their official website, and I sometimes get questions, but because they ship from China, there are no added shipping fees apart from the actual shipping. So, And they do have a pretty reasonable price point where it like cuts off and you don't have to pay for shipping. So, um, Just so you know. But yeah. The Rogue from Fantasy Cosmetica, even if you are not a customer in the US, I feel they are working together with some um, websites to get the products out there, which I really, really appreciate as well. So Fantasy Cosmetica and their Rogue palette, I just really like. The minute this dropped last year, I knew this was gonna be a palette after my heart, and then I tried it, and it was very much confirmed for me. I just mentioned indie brands being very much known for doing bright, fun, colorful things. I'm definitely having a colorful, colorful moment at the minute. I'm really enjoying color again, which is why I decided to go back to some of my Menagerie palettes. In terms of really intensely pigmented colorful shadows, I think Menagerie still kills it. However, I haven't tried any of their newer things because this is one of those brands that is a little bit more expensive for me to get. However, the palettes I have, I really enjoy and my favorite menagerie palette is this one this is the feral um i love the palettes packaging but also the color story in here it's essentially a rainbow but it's not a flat boring primary color rainbow i know a lot of people think of rainbow color stories as just having your greens and you know your your reds and like having all of the like good good primary colors but i find those not too flattering on myself so something like blend bunnies like rainbow palettes. I just know I won't get the use out of it, but something like that. Um, but I feel that these like sort of like more muted pinks work really well on me. They're not like full oranges, but they definitely have that hint of orange, but because they pull very pink on my skin skin tone, they work really well. You do get your, uh, your red and your yellow, so you can mix an orange if you like. For a blue, you get this sort of like turquoisey teal leaning shades. You do get some neutrals, you get a purple and you get the greens. For me, in terms of like a colorful rainbow-esque color story, this is all I need. In the look I did in April, I finally decided to mix some of the pinks with the greens because I love a pink and green clash, but 
I very much am wary of blending those kind of shades together because it can get muddy really easily. The greens and the pinks in here very much made like a plummy undertone, so that's why they worked out really well. I have made looks in the past with the neutrals with, for instance, the pop of teal. I've also used the pinks together with the teal, the pinks together with the red and the purple, the greens with the yellow. Like, there's so many ways you can go with this which is why I still really appreciate it, and I don't hear enough about Menagerie anymore. They were very hyped up a couple years ago, but I still think they are a very solid pick and a good alternative for people who are also in the US. I also have some more EU-based stuff as well. Another palette I forgot to feature at all yesterday when I was talking about it, but I realized it by the end of the video, so if you watch the entire thing, you know that I mentioned the Persona Identity 1, and this is currently in my shop, my stash, which is which is probably why I forgot to pull it for yesterday's video, because I was just going through my drawers and the persona was like in a different section of my makeup collection, like on top of my vanity to have it ready so I can do the looks with it for this month's going back to older palettes video. And I wanted to use this again because it's one of my favorite neutral eyeshadow palettes ever since I tried it, but I haven't really gone back to it much. But the Persona Identity one, it's of course by Persona Cosmetics. They do some other lovely things as well, but this is another brand that is just a little bit more difficult for me to buy. I bought this together with the Persona Identity 2, and together they were just enough to reach like free shipping at the time, I believe. And that's why I felt it was like feasible for me to buy it. Um, but I, it's just not a brand where I feel I can easily get it. So that's why I haven't tried anything save for these two eyeshadow palettes. But this is a great color story if you have brown eyes. This, this palette was created with brown eyes in mind and it definitely has everything. It's got a little bit of warmth, but it's overall quite neutral. You get some really nice cooler tone shimmers in here. None of the shimmers in this palette are overly metallic. It's definitely more of like a satin vibe, which is, again, if you're a beginner with makeup or if perhaps you have more mature skin, this can work really well on you because this is a very nice, easy, blendable formula that doesn't fall down your face and won't crease. Something like the Menagerie shimmers are simply a little bit more difficult to work with. This is foolproof, which is why it has to be in this top 10. Now I said I wanted to feature this mainly on things that are still available, but I cannot for the life of me do a video with my top 10 favorite indie eyeshadow palettes and not feature Glam Shop. And all of the palettes I currently have in my possession by the brand have been discontinued because Glam Shop only does limited edition collections. So whenever they do a palette, you need to snatch it up if you like the look of it. And then, because when it's gone, it's gone and it's not coming back. Um, and I'm so sad that the Coco Sanka is no longer available. I could have featured any Glam Shop palette in this roundup today, but I decided to go back to this because this is my original favorite. This is one of the first palettes from the brand that I tried, and I have compared it to the ColourPop um, That's Taupe a lot, um, but it's more like a more intense, more glam version of that, especially because of that shade in the middle. Do you see that flip? It's this really stunning neutral with like a blue flip, really nice. It has a shade that you'll see in another palette in a minute, which is like a cooler tone bronze, which this is the first time I had tried a shade like it and I just love it. And then you just get three really, really pretty lighter shimmers as well. You get something that's light enough for the crease, a little bit of warmth, but not too much. And the Glam Shop formula is simply incredible. They're mattes, they're shimmers. They also do a whole host of, uh, of singles. So very often, if the palette is no longer available, you are able to pick up some of the singles and they do sales all the time. They have come out with a new palette just recently and it looks stunning. It's just a little bit matte heavy. However, if you love your cool tones, Glam Shop very often does more cool tone leaning palettes in their collection as well. And since they are a Polish drugstore brand, they aren't super expensive either, especially for people in the EU. One of my favorite, like, original indie brands, I feel, is Melt. Um, Melt has been around for ages, and I really enjoy their palettes, and I very much go back and forth between what I'm currently loving from the brand, but I think a very solid favorite that has been really, like, on favorites lists all the time for me 
is the She's in Parties. I used to own this as a stack and then it was released as a palette. I got the palette because there are some shades in here that make it more cool toned and lighter. My one per, like my one gripe with the She's in Parties stack was that it was very, very dark because the stack had this shade and then I think it had this one, this one, and like one of these deeper things. Um, but this has these like softer lilac things which were added to the palette. Um, oh, I think Mean Speak was the one in the, like the matte was the one in the uh, thing. And then you just see that She's in Parties is quite warm toned, but they've added these like deeper shimmers that both are a little bit more cool toned. So I feel that this has a really nice blend in terms of like a mauve rose leaning eyeshadow palette. This has everything I want, so it is a standout palette in my collection to begin with, like compared to everything that's rosy toned that I've owned in the past and that I still own. This is still a standout so many years later. And just for that feat alone, I feel like it deserves a place here, but it's also like one of the best meld palettes they have ever done. The shimmers are on point, the mattes are on point. It's got a really good blend of both of those kind of textures, and it has some really stunning shades. And it can be really dark, so also if you have deeper skin, this will work for you, but because of those lighter additions that they've added since they've made it a palette, it can also now work much better for someone like me. So I just mentioned that there would be a palette with like this like cooler tone bronzy thing. I actually have two options that kind of feature this. Now I do have to preface when I opened this palette, I dropped it the last time I showed this to you in a video and I shattered the darkest matte in this palette. So now the packaging is absolutely ruined. It's very stained. I can get it off, but it's fine. I was able to repress it. We're good. Um, but what am I talking about? It's my Gloss Gots New Neutrals. You guys know I love this brand. This is one of my favorite, like current favorite indie brands. They do a lot of really interesting things and they're based in Sweden. So again, if you're in the EU, these are super easy to get. And as far as price point go, I feel that Gloss Gots is also one of the more affordable indie brands. They do 12 pan palettes and they retail for around the 43 euro mark, which I feel for an eyeshadow palette with 12 pans is quite reasonable. That's a pretty good price point and they do lots of really cool things. Um, and that's why I wanted to feature this one here. This is one of my favorite neutral palettes as well. So remember, excuse the mess because uh, the magnets got like shadow stuck to it and because of the light packaging, you can't wipe it off. Oh well, what's really special about this? I'm not sure if you can see here in the middle, but this shade reflects green and also, oh, you can't see it if I do it like this, but also this one has a hint of green to it. This is more of a flaky. We get sort of like three rows. We get something more cool tone, something more like warm tone leaning with these like reddish tones. And then here it gets a little bit more neutral, but it also features flippy multi-chrome shades and it's less than 50 euros, which I don't, I just don't really see, say for Fantasy Cosmetica, I don't see a lot of brands doing that. And this has like one of those like cooler toned, bronzy leaning shades. These shimmers here at the bottom are some of my favorites. This is just incredibly stunning and it's so, so good. It has everything I want in a neutral palette, but Gloss Gloss is also really good at doing cool tones. So guess what? This is the only brand that's in here twice, but that's just because I love them so much. Of course I had to feature this. <laughs> of course, where would I be without the Gal on Jupiter? This was released at the end of 2023 and I just really, really love it. It's got five mattes, everything else has a shimmer. This doesn't have any flips, but it does have textures. This is a holographic shade, the silver right here. Um, we get some taupey things. And in here also, this sort of like cooler tone bronze, but these two browns I feel have a bit of a red undertone, making them look pink, which is really, really different. And then this shade here, I don't know if you can see that, that that's the only one that has a little bit of a flash. It's not like super duper intense, like some indie brands have, but it's just enough where it really adds some interest to your looks. And it's just an incredibly, incredibly pretty shade. So of course I had to feature this one here. Um, these are both still available and they are two of my favorite, favorite palettes from like the past year. 
The next palette I want to show you is no longer available, but it has been split into two new color stories by the brand. So even though I feel those two new palettes don't exactly dupe this, you can still get the vibe, you could say. So I'm talking about Unearthly's Fall Magic. I have the old version. There is a new version that is called Fall Magic, which is the more warmer toned one. And then the swampy shades we get in here are in the Sorcerer Smoke. Sorcerer Smoke is still like, I'm eyeing it up from afar. I don't think I need it though. But I th still think till this day that the Fall Magic is one of the best palettes ever made. This is stunning. It just really, really is. Um, you get you get five shimmers, everything else is matte, but it's got like, like I said, swampy shades. It's the perfect neutral palette for the fall time with a slight touch of something colorful. It's really, really pretty. It's definitely a little bit more special. You get a really, really nice cool tone shimmer in here. Um, and then you get that like pinky tone that can be really nice as a transition. This one as well here, you get some like purpley things. You have this nice sort of like vibrant bluish green to set off against some of these like plummy and other green shades. So it has a lot going for it. You can do full on purple looks with this. You can do full on green looks with this, but you can also go super neutral and be very basic and just put a colorful shade on the lower lash line and call it a day. So. I really enjoy my fall magic. I definitely think it was very much worth it getting this all the way from the US. But again, Unearthly is also available through Monolith. So a little bit more easier to buy if you do live in the EU. And finally, another favorite indie brand is Nomad Cosmetics. And I was looking at all of my Nomad palettes and I was like, yeah, I think the ghost town, I almost didn't buy this. Almost didn't buy it, but I'm so glad I now have it. Not just because it's the final one like that I've tried from the brand. That's not even the reason why I like this so much. I really, really appreciate the color story. So this is like by day, by night. I like that they do that. This is quite big and I don't love how the packaging just feels like paper. So if one of these shades were to crack, it would be like a similar disaster as my uh, new neutrals from Gloss Gods. But here we have that color story and I just think it looks really, really pretty. You get some cooler tone greens over on this side, and then these look warm, but I feel they pull very neutral on me. So it's like your perfect neutral with a pop of something grungy green, but without it being too dark. And I have mentioned many times how I feel that Nomad Cosmetics is the best indie brand to get started with if you're a beginner with makeup or if you wanna get into indie brands because their formula is a little bit thinner and it's not like the menagerie ones where there's potential staining and where you need to like blend for days to get the blend that you want. These blend themselves. It's a very, very nice formula. And I also feel that Nomad is like pretty reasonable when it comes to price point. I feel you get a quite a lot of bang for your buck and I really enjoy the palettes I have from them for sure. Those are the top 10 favorite indie eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to share with you today. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite indie palette is. I would love to know. So I would like to thank you so very much for joining me here today. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I do these kind of themed style weeks every single month. Uh, I haven't decided yet what the theme is going to be next month. I'm, I'm still doubting whether I should go K-beauty, luxury, or drugstore makeup. I'm thinking drugstore makeup, but I'm not sure yet. So let me know in a comment down below what you would like to see me do. Do you want to see me do a week dedicated to K-beauty? Do you want to see me do a week where I dedicate all of my videos to drugstore makeup? Or do you want to see me talk about nothing but luxury makeup? Those are the options. I'm going to do all three of these sometime in the year. I, I try to pick a different theme every month. Um, and this month it was uh, in the eyeshadow palettes and next month it's going to be something else. So I really hope you enjoyed this today. Thank you so very much for joining me. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.